Good morning and welcome to the Daily Devotion. This is Vicar Dennis with you again. It is uh, January 6th. We're at Divine Shepherd Lutheran here in Blackhawk, South Dakota. It's good to have you uh, with me today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is your devotion. I don't think I said it, but anyway, this is devotion for January 6th, which happens to be the epiphany of our Lord. <clears throat> and uh, for that reading today, we are in the final chapter of Isaiah. We'll be looking at Isaiah chapter 66, uh, verses 1 through 20 today. And our psalm comes from Psalm uh, 40, Psalm 45. We read, My heart overflows with a pleasing theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready scribe. You are the most handsome of the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your thigh, O mighty one, in your splendor and majesty. In your majesty, ride out victoriously for the cause of truth and meekness and righteousness. Let your right hand teach you awesome deeds. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. His throne is forever and ever. Isn't that beautiful? The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Thanks be to God, dear saints, that um, because of what his dear son did for us upon the cross, that we are, we are not, we're not judged because of, our, uh, because of Christ taking our sins upon himself. Um, we don't have to fear. There's no fear for, the, for, for those of us that are in Christ Jesus. We don't have to, we don't fear um, that um, uh, we, we face the judgment. We've already been judged because of what Christ did for us. Old Testament reading, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me and what is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made and so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look, he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. He who slaughters an ox is like one who kills a man. He who sacrifices a lamb like one who breaks a dog's neck. He who presents a grain offering like one who offers pig's blood. Who, he who makes a memorial offering of frankincense like one who blesses an idol. These have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations. I also will choose harsh, harsh treatment for them and bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not listen. But they did what was evil in my eyes and chose that in which I did not delight. Hear the word of the Lord, and you who tremble at his word, your brothers who hate you and cast you out for my name's sake, have said, Let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy, but it is they who shall be put to shame. The sound of an uproar from the city, a sound from the temple, the sound of the Lord rendering recompense to his enemies. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came upon her, she delivered a son. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall a land be born in one day? 
shall a nation be brought forth in one moment? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the point of birth and not cause to bring forth, says the Lord? Shall I, who cause to bring forth, shut the womb, says your God? Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breasts, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon her hip, and bounced upon her knees as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come in fire and his chariots like the whirlwind, to render his anger in fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire will the Lord enter into judgment, and by his sword with all flesh. And those slain by the Lord shall be many. Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go into the gardens, following one in the midst, eating pig's flesh and the abomination and mice, shall come to an end together, declares the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts, and that and the time is coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and shall see my glory, and I will set a sign among them. And from them I will send survivors to the nations, to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud, who draw the bow, to Tubal and Jabin, to the coastlands far away, that have not heard my fame or seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations. And they shall bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. Well, once again, <clears throat> here in this reading today, if we look back there, uh, if you look back with me at verse 4, um, he's, he had said this, we saw that these words uh, in, the, in the last chapter, when we talked about this yesterday, it says, God says again, because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not listen. But they did what was evil in my eyes and chose that in which I did not delight. Going back to our psalm where, where he says, the psalmist says, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. <clears throat> but these people continue to do these things. And what are some of these things that they did, these abominations? <clears throat> it talks about this here. Uh, down further in the chapter, it talks about um, they were the things that they're doing, they're eating pig's flesh and the abomination and mice, all of these things that they're doing, it, all of this wickedness. Uh, if you go back also or earlier in the chapter there, it's, it's as if they were making a mockery of, of the law. Um, and he says this, uh, the words, um, you know, they're slaughtering the oxes as if they're killing a man. They sacrifice a lamb like one who breaks a dog, dog's neck and so on. And there's these other, um, it, it says uh, this a little bit further, <clears throat> excuse me. He who makes a memorial offering of frankincense like one who blesses an idol. And then it sums it up when it says, they, These have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations. Um, <clears throat> they, they've made a mockery of, of the sacrifices and these things. And, and, uh, and, and God says they will be judged. We see the final judgment here when he says he will come in fire. Uh, you see fire talked about like three or four times in here. Um, fire, that word meaning judgment, that the people are going to be judged um, because, of, <clears throat> because of their sins and because of their unrepentant hearts. 
the gospel portion of this in here, uh, dear saints, we have these wonderful promises in here where God says this. If we look at verse 13, he says, as one, as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants. And he shall show his indignation against his enemies. This is wonderful imagery here again that when we think about that God grants us, he grants us peace and pardon and rest and rest in him. Uh, peace, knowing that our sins are forgiven, that he's wiped everything clean, that um, he doesn't hold those sins against us. He doesn't hold us accountable to uh, those things, but <clears throat> because of his dear son, Jesus, dying upon the cross for your sins and my sins, um, that we have that wonderful peace and that wonderful assurance. Also, when he comes to us here in this place in his very body and blood, when we know that through that we receive the forgiveness of his sins, and once again, as we take that sweet medicine, we know that, 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 that God, again, Jesus, is dwelling with us and he's in us um, to strengthen us, to nourish us in our faith so that we can continue to walk in his ways. Well, I think that wraps it up for, I, th I think with today's reading, we're, we are uh, through Isaiah. Um, there was a lot, of, a lot of ground to cover in there and a lot of, a lot of uh, great things to talk about. Uh, I hope up to this, this point that uh, these devotions uh, in, in Isaiah have been a blessing uh, to you. Shall we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You shall have no other gods, is what the first commandment tells us. We see this time and again that, uh, as, I, as I mentioned to you yesterday, Israel has continued... God's people, this is how we get ourselves all turned upside down is when we constantly chase after everything else uh, like, like we often do in our sin where we don't put our fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And we certainly see this uh, in this final chapter of Isaiah um, as, as uh, judgment is coming upon the people in the form of uh, being taken uh, being taken into captivity and taken into exile, which is going to happen here very soon as we move into the prophet uh, Ezekiel, who, who kind of was a prophet during uh, the, the beginning of the exile and the, before the exile and then, and then uh, during, during the time of the exile. Uh, another, another prophet who was sent to speak to God's uh, stubborn people. Uh, we pray. <clears throat> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, it's been good being with you again today, and next time I see you, we'll be uh, uh, 
jumping into the prophet Ezekiel. God's blessings on your day.